Moses had to believe something he had never seen. He had to walk and do something he had never seen anybody do. Moses had to become the man he had never had in his life. Moses had to trust God. In the face of gross adversity and turbulence, in the face of people that did not believe that he was the one that was to lead them into a promised land, even if you are tired, even if you are weary, even when you don't completely believe, can you trust God? The Bible says in Exodus 14 and 21, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by the strong east wind all the night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. But God told him that he would do it. And with many of us, God tells you that breakthrough is coming and curses are about to be broken. The miraculous is going to be unleashed in your life and he's going to speak to you before you see it. And you got to catch the word before you see the manifestation. You have to stand on the word of God before you see it. Stand on it before you see it. This is the beauty and the brilliance and the power of leaning not to your own understanding, but trusting the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who was and is and is to come, the God that is already standing at the end, he's at the beginning and he's with you right in the middle of the worst hour of your life. Oh, I sent it. Now it's time to declare the blessing. Every cell, muscle, tissue, fiber, joint, ligament, bone, organ, system in my body, is functioning in perfection which God intended to it to function. I call forth healing, complete restoration. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee and I will saith the Lord. My body radiates greatness. No sickness will have any dominion over me. I think like a champion. I speak like a champion. I work out like a champion. And when I sit down at the food table, the food I put in my body helps make me a better champion. My body is holy. My body is the temple. The spirit resides in my body and I will treat my body with respect. I align every ounce of my being with my message. I look, I feel, I radiate greatness. And I speak over my finances. Money comes to me easily, frequently, and abundantly in God's perfect way with no burden added to it. I am the master of money. Money does not own me, I own it. It serves me. I don't serve it. I am the head and not the tail. Above, not below. I will lend to many nations and not borrow. I am a millionaire. That's right, I said I'm a millionaire. Scarcity and lack have no place in the life of a Christian. Isaac planted his crops that year. And he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted, for the Lord blessed him and his wealth continued to grow. Money's coming to me, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. My storehouses are overflowing with you, Lord, the overseer. I wrap every dollar with grace, love, and for the betterment of your kingdom. I speak over my relationships now. All the right mentors, mentees, coaches, teachers, People who have knowledge that I need to fulfill my God-given calling are now coming into my life. My marriage is one of unity, one of love, one of passion, one of friendship. We are united together as one under the one true God. I speak life over my wife. Love, joy, happiness, encouragement, inspiration, uplifting. Every word I speak builds her up. No sickness has any dominion over her. The devil has no place in her life. She is prosperous, successful, anointed, less than unstoppable in the name of Jesus. The devil has no place in my home. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord united as one. I refuse to give the devil a foothold in my life because no corrupt communication shall proceed out of my mouth. Fear has no dominion over me. For the Lord did not give me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of sound mind. I believe champions don't run from fear, they attack it. I'm not in chains. I'm not in bondage. I'm not a slave to anything. 
For he who the sun sets free is free indeed, and I am free. Alcohol, drugs, lust, greed, pride, bitterness, jealousy, unforgiveness, anger, eating disorders, panic attacks, PTSD, cancer, heart attacks, strokes. None of these things have any dominion over me. Cause I'm but why do I stress peace, y'all? The reason why I, I stress peace because it is a biblical construct. It's from the word of God. Peace is so deep. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. You are limiting God. Shame on you, you hypocrite. You're always talking about non-believers and how they don't respect God. You know God. You know God. You know God. And you didn't put the same limits on God that non-believers put on him. The Bible says, and the peace of God, peace comes from heaven, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Do you know that it's peace job to stand before your heart? Do you know it's peace job to stand before your mind? When you have peace, it protects, it binds the enemy, and you're wondering why you can't sleep, and you're wondering why you have a spirit of anxiety. You don't have your protector. I dare you to get your protector. I dare you to get your protector, which is peace. Let God protect your heart and your mind. Like, do you have the ability to accept what you don't understand? Can you still see God's plan when it didn't go the way that you thought it would go? Can you handle when things get off course? I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, man, I'm eight games away, and God is redirecting me, and I'm like, God, just let me get to the NFL, then redirect me. Like, let me get the contract, then redirect me so I can help my family. And God's like, no, son, I need you to really go that way. And I'm like, you sure? Like, man, let me go this way. He's like, no, I need you to go this way. I got something greater for you. Now, it might take a little longer to manifest, but I got something even sweeter. And I said, thank you, God. And I thought it was over after football got redirected. My life got redirected two, three more times before I even fell into my purpose and my mission and what I was supposed to be doing. It got redirected two, three more times. I'm thinking I'm going to be a coach. Just like every guy when he finishes the game. And I'll just coach. God's like, no, you ain't. I'm like, oh, this is it. Nope, no peace. And I always tell the story about when my faith was fortified and my life went to another level was the only thing I had at that moment was a prayer and a book. And the prayer that I prayed was, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. Exact prayer, I don't know what you want me to do. But people keep coming to me telling me, speak, Inky, you need to speak. And I'm like, I'm not speaking. And God brought me to the point where I had nothing and I was on my knees and I said, Lord, listen, I don't know if this is what you want me to do, but I submit and let's rock. At a certain point, you're going to hit something that's going to test that level of faith. And my definition of commitment was always staying true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in has left. Like, am I going to stay true to my beliefs and my core and my essence of who I am as an individual, even if I get a paralyzed right arm and hand? Am I going to stay true to it? Even if my little career that I thought I was going to have disappears, am I going to stay true to it? Even if one day I'm in a football game, the thing I love to do, the thing I've been practicing my whole life, and then one moment it gets wiped out, am I going to stay true to it? Because depending upon if I'm going to stay true to it, a lot of other people's belief in their Christian journey is predicated upon that and my belief in my Christian journey. In other words, I've seen a lot of other people say, Inky, I want to give my life to Christ, not because of something that happened with me, but because of something I've seen happen to you. And people have the nerve to ask me all the time, Inky, why wouldn't you change what happened to you? You got a paralyzed right arm and hand. I'm like, if you only knew and if you only saw the works that God has done in people's lives around me, what he's done in me, yeah, it's great, it's cool. But what God has done in the people's lives around me, like, you can't put a price on that.